Welcome back. Please share, subscribe, and comment. ABBA, AB Swedish. Ba. We're a Swedish pop group formed in Stockholm in 1972 by Agnetha Faltskog, Björn Ulvius, Benny Anderson, and Annie Frid Lingstad. They're one of the most popular and successful musical groups of all time and are one of the best selling music acts in the history of popular music. In 1974, ABBA were Sweden's first winner of the Eurovision Song Contest with the song Waterloo, which in 2005 was chosen as the best song in the competition's history as part of the 50th anniversary celebration of the contest. During the band's main active years, it consisted of two married couples, Faltskog and Ulvius, and Lingstad and Anderson. With the increase of their popularity, their personal lives suffered, which eventually resulted in the collapse of both marriages. The relationship changes were reflected in the group's music, with later songs featuring darker and more introspective lyrics. After ABBA disbanded in December 1982, Anderson and Ulvius continued their success writing music for multiple audiences including stage, musicals, and movies, while Faltskog and Lingstad pursued solo careers. Ten years after the group broke up, a compilation, ABBA Gold, was released, becoming a worldwide bestseller. In 1999, ABBA's music was adapted into Mamma Mia, a stage musical that toured worldwide and, as of April 2022, is still in the top 10 longest-running productions on both Broadway, closed in 2015, and The West End, still running. A film of the same name, released in 2008, became the highest-grossing film in the United Kingdom that year. A sequel, Mamma Mia, Here We Go Again, was released in 2018. ABBA are among the best-selling music artists in history, with record sales estimated to be between 150 million to 385 million sold worldwide, and the group were ranked third best-selling singles artists in the United Kingdom with a total of 11.3 million singles sold by November 3, 2012. In May 2023, ABBA were awarded the Brit Billion Award which celebrates those who have surpassed the milestone of 1 billion UK streams in their career. ABBA were the first group from a non-English-speaking country to achieve consistent success in the charts of English-speaking countries, including the United Kingdom, Australia, United States, Republic of Ireland, Canada, New Zealand, and South Africa. They are the best-selling Swedish band of all time and the best-selling band originating in continental Europe. ABBA had eight consecutive number one albums in the UK. The group also enjoyed significant success in Latin America and recorded a collection of their hit songs in Spanish. ABBA were inducted into the Vocal Group Hall of Fame in 2002. The group were inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in 2010, the first recording artist to receive this honor from outside an Anglophonic country. In 2015, their song Dancing Queen was inducted into the Recording Academy's Grammy Hall of Fame. In 2024, the United States Library of Congress included the album Arrival, 1976, in the National Recording Registry, which recognizes works worthy of preservation for all time based on their cultural, historical, or aesthetic importance in the nation's recorded sound heritage. In 2016, the group reunited and started working on a digital avatar concert tour. Newly recorded songs were announced in 2018. Voyage, their first new album in 40 years, was released on November 5, 2021 to positive critical reviews and strong sales in numerous countries. ABBA Voyage, a concert residency featuring ABBA as virtual avatars, opened in May 2022 in London. History 1958 to 1970. Before ABBA member origins and collaboration Agnetha Faltskog, born April 5, 1950 in Jönköping, Sweden, sang with a local dance band headed by Bern Inghard, who sent a demo recording of their music to Carl Gerhard Lundqvist. The demo tape featured a song written and sung by Agnetha. Jag Varis A. Carr, I was so in love. Lundqvist was so impressed with her voice that he was convinced she would be a star. After going through considerable effort to locate the singer, he arranged for Agnetha to come to Stockholm and to record two of her own songs. This led to Agnetha, at the age of 18, having a number one record in Sweden with a self-composed song, which later went on to sell over 80,000 copies. She was soon noticed by the critics and songwriters as a talented singer-songwriter of Schlager-style songs. 
Faltzkog's main inspiration in her early years was singers such as Connie Francis. Along with her own compositions, she recorded covers of foreign hits and performed them on tours in Swedish folk parks. Most of her biggest hits were self-composed, which was quite unusual for a female singer in the 1960s. Agnetha released four solo LPs between 1968 and 1971. She had many successful singles in the Swedish charts. Bjorn Ulvius, born April 25, 1945 in Gothenburg, Sweden, also began his musical career at the age of 18 as a singer and guitarist when he fronted the Hootenanny Singers, a popular Swedish folk skiffle group. Ulvius started writing English-language songs for his group and even had a brief solo career alongside. The Hootenanny Singers and the Hep Stars sometimes crossed paths while touring. In June 1966, Ulvius and Anderson decided to write a song together. Their first attempt was Isn't It Easy to Say, a song that was later recorded by the Hep Stars. Stig Anderson was the manager of the Hootenanny Singers and founder of the Polar Music label. He saw potential in the collaboration and encouraged them to write more. The two also began playing occasionally with the other's bands on stage and on record, although it was not until 1969 that the pair wrote and produced some of their first real hits together. Ljuvis Sextital Sweet Sixties, recorded by Brita Borg and the Hep Stars' 1969 hit Spielman Fiddler. Benny Anderson, born December 16, 1946 in Stockholm, Sweden, became, at age 18, a member of a popular Swedish pop rock group, the Hep Stars, that performed, among other things, covers of international hits. The Hep Stars were known as the Swedish Beatles. They also set up Hep House, their equivalent of Apple Corps. Anderson played the keyboard and eventually started writing original songs for his band, many, of which became major hits including No Response, which hit number three in 1965, and Sunny Girl, Wedding, and Consolation, all of which hit number one in 1966. Anderson also had a fruitful songwriting collaboration with Lasse Berghagen, with whom he wrote his first Svenstoppen entry, Sagan O.M. Lilla Sophie, The Tale of Little Sophie, in 1968. Anderson wrote and submitted the song Hedge, Clown for Melody Festival in 1969, the national festival to select the Swedish entry to the Eurovision Song Contest. The song tied for first place, but re-voting relegated Anderson's song to second place. On that occasion, Anderson briefly met his future spouse, singer Annie Frid Lingstad, who also participated in the contest. A month later, the two had become a couple. As their respective bands began to break up during 1969, Anderson and Ulvius teamed up and recorded their first album together in 1970, called Licka, Happiness, which included original songs sung by both men. Their partners were often present in the recording studio and sometimes added backing vocals. Faltzkog even co-wrote a song with the two. Olvius still occasionally recorded and performed with the Hootenanny Singers until the middle of 1974, and Anderson took part in producing their records. Anifrid Frida Lingstad, born November 15th, 1945 in Jorkasen in Ballingen Municipality, Norway, sang from the age of 13 with various dance bands and worked mainly in a jazz-oriented cabaret style. She also formed her own band, the Annie Frit Four. In the middle of 1967, she won a national talent competition with In Ledig Dag, A Day Off, a Swedish version of the Bossa Nova song, A Day, in Portofino, which is included in the EMI compilation Frida 1967-1972. The first prize was a recording contract with EMI Sweden and to perform live on the most popular TV shows in the country. This TV performance, among many others, is included in the three-plus-a-half-hour documentary Frida, the DVD. Linkstad released several Schlager-style singles on EMI with mixed success. When Benny Anderson started to produce her recordings in 1971, she had her first number one single, Min Ejen Stad, My Own Town, written by Benny and featuring all the future ABBA members on backing vocals. Lingstad toured and performed regularly in the folk park circuit and made appearances on radio and TV. She had a second number one single with Manville Jew Level Light Decimelon in late 1972. She had met Olvius briefly in 1963 during a talent contest and Faltzkog during a TV show in early 1968. Lingstad linked up with her future bandmates in 1969. On March 1, 
1969, she participated in the Melody Festival, where she met Anderson for the first time. A few weeks later, they met again during a concert tour in southern Sweden, and they soon became a couple. Anderson produced her single Peter Pan in September 1969, her first collaboration with Benny and Bjorn, as they had written the song. Anderson would then produce Lingstad's debut studio album, Frida, which was released in March 1971. Lingstad also played in several reviews and cabaret shows in Stockholm between 1969 and 1973. After ABBA formed, she recorded another successful album in 1975, Frida in Sam, which included the original Swedish rendition of Fernando, a hit on the Swedish radio charts before the English version was released by ABBA. During filming of a Swedish TV special in May 1969, Faltskog met Ulvius and they married on July 6, 1971. Faltskog and Ulvius eventually were involved in each other's recording sessions, and soon even Anderson and Lingstad added backing vocals to Faltskog's third studio album, Som Jag AR, As I Am, 1970. In 1972, Faltskog starred as Mary Magdalene in the original Swedish production of Jesus Christ Superstar and attracted favorable reviews. Between 1967 and 1975, Faltskog released five studio albums. First live performance and the start of Festfolket. An attempt at combining their talents occurred in April 1970 when the two couples went on holiday together to the island of Cyprus. What started as singing for fun on the beach ended up as an improvised live performance in front of the United Nations soldiers stationed on the island. Anderson and Ulvius were at this time recording their first album together, Licka, which was to be released in September 1970. Faltskog and Lingstad added backing vocals on several tracks during June, and the idea of their working together saw them launch a stage act, Festfolket, which translates from Swedish to party people, and in pronunciation also engaged couples, on November 1, 1970 in Gothenburg. The cabaret show attracted generally negative reviews, except for the performance of the Anderson and Ulvius hit Hedge, Gamla Man, Hello Old Man, the first Bjorn and Benny recording to feature all four. They also performed solo numbers from respective albums, but the lukewarm reception convinced the foursome to shelve plans for working together for the time being and each soon concentrated on individual projects again. First record together, Hedge, Gamla Man, Hedge, Gamla Man, a song about an old Salvation Army. Soldier became the quartet's first hit. The record was credited to Bjorn and Benny and reached number five on the sales charts and number one on Svens Toppen, staying on the latter chart, which was not a chart linked to sales or airplay, for 15 weeks. It was during 1971 that the four artists began working together more adding vocals to the other's recordings. Faltskog, Anderson, and Ulvius toured together in May, while Lingstad toured on her own. Frequent recording sessions brought the foursome closer together during the summer, 1970 to 1973. Forming the group after the 1970 release of Lika, two more singles credited to Bjorn and Benny were released in Sweden, Deccan Engine Dr. Jalpa, No Doctor Can Help With That, and Tank OM Jordan Vorung, Imagine If Earth Was Young, with more prominent vocals by Faltskog and Lingstad, and moderate chart success. Faltskog and Ulvius, now married, started performing together with Anderson on a regular basis at the Swedish folk parks in the middle of 1971. Stig Anderson, founder and owner of Polar Music, was determined to break into the mainstream international market with music by Anderson and Ulvius. One day the pair of you will write a song that becomes a worldwide hit he predicted. Stig Anderson encouraged Ulvius and Anderson to write a song for Melody Festival in. And after two rejected entries in 1971, Anderson and Ulvius submitted their new song, Sag Det Med In Sang, Say It With A. Song for the 1972 contest, choosing newcomer Lena Anderson to perform. The song came in third place, encouraging Stig Anderson, and became a hit in Sweden. The first signs of foreign success came as a surprise. As the Anderson and Ulvius single, She's My Kind of Girl, was released through Epic Records in Japan in March 1972, giving the duo a top 10 hit. Two more singles were released in Japan, In Carousel, In Carousel in Scandinavia, an earlier version of Merry Go Round, and Love Has Its Ways, a song they wrote with Koichi Morita. First hit as Bjorn, Benny, 
Agnetha, and Annie Frid Ulvius and Anderson persevered with their songwriting and experimented with new sounds and vocal arrangements. People Need Love was released in June 1972, featuring guest vocals by the women, who were now given much greater prominence. Stig Anderson released it as a single, credited to Bjorn and Benny, Agnetha, and Annie Frid. The song peaked at number 17 in the Swedish combined single and album charts, enough to convince them they were onto something. People Need Love also became the first record to chart for the quartet in the United States, where it peaked at number 114 on the Cashbox Singles Chart and number 117 on the Record World Singles Chart. Labeled as Bjorn and Benny with Svenska Flicka, meaning Swedish girl, it was released there through Playboy Records. According to Stig Anderson, People Need Love could have been a much bigger, American hit, but a small label like Playboy Records did not have the distribution resources to meet the demand for the single from retailers and radio programmers. Ring Ring in 1973, the band and their manager Stig Anderson decided to have another try at Melody Festival in, this time with the song Ring Ring. The studio sessions were handled by Michael B. Trado, who experimented with a wall of sound production technique that became a distinctive new sound thereafter associated with ABBA. Stig Anderson arranged an English translation of the lyrics by Neil Sadaka and Phil Cody, and they thought this would be a success. However, on February 10, 1973, the song came third in Melody Festival, and thus it never reached the Eurovision song. Contest itself. Nevertheless, the group released their debut studio album, also called Ring Ring. The album did well, and the Ring Ring single was a hit in many parts of Europe, and also in South Africa. However, Stig Anderson felt that the true breakthrough could only come with a UK or US hit. When Agnetha Faltzgog gave birth to her daughter Linda in 1973, she was replaced for a short period by Inger Brunden on a trip to West Germany. Official naming in 1973, Stig Anderson, tired of unwieldy names, started to refer to the group privately and publicly as ABBA, a palindrome. At first, this was a play on words, as ABBA is also the name of a well-known fish canning company in Sweden, in itself an abbreviation. However, since the fish canners were unknown outside Sweden, Anderson came to believe the name would work in international markets. A competition to find a suitable name for the group was held in a Gothenburg newspaper, and it was officially announced in the summer that the group were to be known as ABBA. The group negotiated with the canners for the rights to the name. Fred Bronson reported for Billboard that Faltzgog told him in a 1988 interview that ABBA had to ask permission and the factory said, OK, as long as you don't make us feel ashamed for what you're doing. ABBA is an acronym formed from the first letters of each group member's first name, Agnetha, Bjorn, Benny, Annie Frid, although there has never been any official confirmation of who each letter in the sequence refers to. The earliest known example of ABBA written on paper is on a recording session sheet from the Metronome Studio in Stockholm dated October 16, 1973. This was first written as Bjorn, Benny, Agnetha, and Frida, but was subsequently crossed out with ABBA written in large letters on top. Official logo, their official logo, with its distinctive backward B, was designed by Rune Sodervist, who designed most of ABBA's record sleeves. The ambigram first appeared on the French compilation album, Golden Double Album, released in May 1976 by Dis Vogue, and would henceforth be used for all official releases. The idea for the official logo was made by the German photographer Wolfgang Buby Heilmann on a velvet jumpsuit photo shoot for the teenage magazine Bravo. In the photo, the ABBA members held giant initial letters of their names. After the pictures were made, Heilman found out that Benny Anderson reversed his letter B. This prompted discussions about the mirrored B, and the members of ABBA agreed on the mirrored letter. From 1976 onward, the first B in the logo version of the name was Mirror Image, reversed on the band's promotional material. Following their acquisition of the group's catalog, Polygram began using variations of the ABBA logo, employing a different font. In 1992, Polygram added a crown emblem to it for the first release of the ABBA Gold, Greatest Hits compilation. After Universal Music purchased Polygram, and thus ABBA's label Polar Music International, control of the group's catalog returned to Stockholm. Since then, the original logo has been reinstated on all official products. 
1973 to 1976. Breakthrough Eurovision Song Contest, 1974 ABBA entered the Melody Festival in with Ring Ring, but did not qualify as the 1973 Swedish entry. Stig Anderson started planning for the 1974 contest. Alvius, Anderson, and Stig Anderson saw possibilities in using the Eurovision Song Contest to make the music business aware of them as songwriters, as well as to publicize the band. In late 1973, they were invited by Swedish television to contribute a song for the Melody Festival in 1974, and the upbeat song Waterloo was chosen. The group are now inspired by the growing glam rock scene in England. With this third attempt, ABBA were more experienced and better prepared for the Eurovision Song Contest, and they won the nation's hearts on Swedish television on February 9, 1974. Winning the 1974 Eurovision Song Contest on April 6, 1974, and singing Waterloo in English instead of their native language, gave them the chance to tour Europe and perform on major television shows, as a result of which the Waterloo single charted in many European countries. After winning the contest, ABBA spent an evening of glory partying in the appropriately named first floor Napoleon Suite of the Grand Brighton Hotel. Waterloo was ABBA's first major hit and their first number one single in nine. Western and Northern European countries, including the major markets of the UK and West Germany and in South Africa, it made the top 10 in other countries, rising to number three in Spain, number four in Australia and France, and number seven in Canada. In the United States, the song peaked at number six on the Billboard Hot 100 chart, paving the way for their first album and their first trip to the U.S. as a group. Although only a short promotional visit, this included their first performance on American television, on The Mike Douglas Show. The Waterloo album peaked at only number 145 on the Billboard 200 chart, but received unanimous praise from U.S. critics. The Los Angeles Times said the album was a compelling and fascinating debut album that captured the spirit of mainstream pop and described it as immensely enjoyable and pleasant, while Cream said it was a perfect blend of exceptional, lovable compositions. ABBA's follow-up single, Honey Honey, peaked at number 27 on the U.S. Billboard Hot 100, reached the top 20 in several other countries, and was a number two hit in West Germany, although it only reached the top 30 in Australia and the U.S. In the U.K., ABBA's British record label, Epic decided to re-release a remixed version of Ring Ring instead of Honey Honey. A cover version of Honey Honey by Sweet Dreams peaked at number 10, and both records debuted on the UK chart within a week of each other. Ring Ring failed to reach the top 30 in the UK, increasing growing speculation that the group were simply a Eurovision one-hit wonder. Post-Eurovision in November 1974, ABBA embarked on their first European tour, playing dates in Denmark, West Germany, and Austria. It was not as successful as the band had hoped, since most of the venues did not sell out. Due to a lack of demand, they were even forced to cancel a few shows, including a sole concert scheduled in Switzerland. The second leg of the tour, which took them through Scandinavia in January 1975, was very different. They played at full houses everywhere and finally got the reception they had aimed for. Live performances continued in the middle of 1975 when ABBA embarked on a 14. Open-air date tour of Sweden and Finland. Their Stockholm show at the Granalon Amusement Park had an estimated audience of 19,200. Bjorn Ulvius later said, If you look at the singles we released straight after Waterloo, we were trying to be more like the Sweet, a semi-glam rock group, which was stupid because we were always a pop group. In late 1974, So Long was released as a single in the United Kingdom, but it received no airplay from Radio 1 and failed to chart in the UK. The only countries in which it was successful were Austria, Sweden, and Germany, reaching the top 10 in the first two and number 21 in the latter. In the middle of 1975, ABBA released I Do, I Do, I Do, I Do, I Do, which again received little airplay on Radio 1, but did manage to climb to number 38 on the UK chart while making top five in several northern and western European countries, and number one in South Africa. Later that year, the release of their self-titled third studio album ABBA and single SOS brought back their chart presence in the UK, with a single hit number six, and the album peaked at number 13. SOS also became ABBA's second number one single in Germany, 
They're third in Australia and reach number two in several other European countries, including Italy. Success was further solidified with Mamma Mia reaching number one in the United Kingdom, Germany, and Australia, and the top two in a few other Western and Northern European countries. In the United States, both I do, I do, I do, I do, I do, and SOS peaked at number 15 on the Billboard Hot 100 chart, with the latter picking up the BMI award along the way as one of the most played songs on American radio in 1975. Mamma Mia, however, stalled at number 32. In Canada, the three songs rose to number 12, 9, and 18, respectively. The success of the group in the United States had until that time been limited to single releases. By early 1976, the group already had four top 30 singles on the U.S. charts, but the album market proved to be tough to crack. The eponymous ABBA album generated three American hits, but it only peaked at number 165 on the Cashbox album chart and number 174 on the Billboard 200 chart. Opinions were voiced by Cream in particular that in the U.S. ABBA had endured a very sloppy promotional campaign. Nevertheless, the group enjoyed warm reviews from the American press. Cashbox went as far as saying that there is a recurrent thread of taste and artistry inherent in ABBA's marketing, creativity, and presentation that makes it almost embarrassing to critique their efforts, while Cream wrote. SOS is surrounded on this LP by so many good tunes that the mind boggles. In Australia, the airing of the music videos for I Do, I Do, I Do, I Do, I Do, and Mamma Mia on the nationally broadcast TV pop show Countdown, which premiered in November 1974, saw the band rapidly gain enormous popularity and Countdown become a key promoter of the group via their distinctive music videos. This started an immense interest for ABBA in Australia, resulting in I Do, I Do, I Do, I Do, I Do staying at number one for three weeks, then SOS spending a week there, followed by Mamma Mia staying there for 10 weeks, and the album holding down the number one position for months. The three songs were also successful in nearby New Zealand with the first two topping that chart and the third reaching number two. 1976 to 1981. Superstardom Greatest Hits and Arrival in March 1976, the band released the compilation album Greatest Hits. It became their first UK number one album and also took ABBA into the top 50 on the US album charts for the first time, eventually selling more than a million copies there. Also included on Greatest Hits was a new single, Fernando, which went to number one in at least 13 countries all over the world including the UK, Germany, France, Australia, South Africa, and Mexico, and the top five in most other significant markets, including, at number four, becoming their biggest hit to date in Canada. The single went on to sell over 10 million copies worldwide. In Australia, Fernando occupied the top position for a then-record-breaking 14 weeks and stayed in the chart for 40 weeks and was the longest-running chart topper there for over 40 years until it was overtaken by Ed Sheeran's Shape of You in May 2017. It still remains as one of the best-selling singles of all time in Australia. Also in 1976, the group received its first international prize, with Fernando being chosen as the best studio recording of 1975. In the United States, Fernando reached the top 10 of the Cashbox Top 100 Singles Chart and number 13 on the Billboard Hot 100. It topped the Billboard Adult Contemporary Chart, ABBA's first American number one single on any chart. At the same time, a compilation named The Very Best of ABBA was released in Germany, becoming a number one album there whereas the Greatest Hits compilation, which followed a few months later, ascended to number two in Germany, despite all similarities with The Very Best album. The group's fourth studio album, Arrival, a number one bestseller in parts of Europe, the UK and Australia, and a number three. Hit in Canada and Japan, represented a new level of accomplishment in both songwriting and studio work, prompting rave reviews from more rock-oriented UK music weeklies, such as Melody Maker and New Musical Express, and mostly appreciative notices from US critics. Hit after hit flowed from Arrival. Money, 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 another number one in Germany, France, Australia, and other countries of Western and Northern Europe, plus number three in the UK. And Knowing Me, Knowing You, ABBA's sixth consecutive German number one, as well as another UK number one, plus a top five hit in many other countries, although it was only a number nine hit in Australia and France. The real sensation was the first single, Dancing Queen, not only. 
topping the charts in loyal markets like the UK, Germany, Sweden, several other Western and Northern European countries, and Australia, but also reaching number one in the United States, Canada, the Soviet Union and Japan, and the top 10 in France, Spain, and Italy. All three songs were number one hits in Mexico. In South Africa, ABBA had astounding success with each of Fernando, Dancing Queen, and Knowing Me, Knowing You being among the top 20 best-selling singles for 1976 to 77. In 1977, Arrival was nominated for the inaugural Brit Award in the category Best International Album of the Year. By this time, ABBA were popular in the UK, most of Europe, Australia, New Zealand, and Canada. In Frida, the DVD Linkstad explains how she and Falzgog developed as singers as ABBA's recordings grew more complex over the years. The band's mainstream popularity in the United States would remain on a comparatively smaller scale, and Dancing Queen became the only Billboard Hot 100 number one single for ABBA, though it immediately became, and remains to this day, a major gay anthem, with Knowing Me, Knowing You later peaking at number seven. Money, 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 however, had barely charted there or in Canada, where Knowing Me, Knowing You had reached number five. They did, however, get three more singles to the number one position on other Billboard US charts, including Billboard Adult Contemporary and Hot Dance Club Play. Nevertheless, Arrival finally became a true breakthrough release for ABBA on the US album market, where it peaked at number 20 on the Billboard 200 chart and was certified gold by RIA. European and Australian tour in January 1977, ABBA embarked on their first major tour. The group status had changed dramatically and they were clearly regarded as superstars. They opened their much-anticipated tour in Oslo, Norway, on January 28th, and mounted a lavishly produced spectacle that included a few scenes from their self-written mini-operetta The Girl with the Golden Hair. The concert attracted huge media attention from across Europe and Australia. They continued the tour through Western Europe, visiting Gothenburg, Copenhagen, Berlin, and Cologne, Amsterdam, Antwerp, Essen, Hanover, and Hamburg, and ending with shows in the United Kingdom in Manchester, Birmingham, Glasgow, and two sold-out concerts at London's Royal Albert Hall. Tickets for these two shows were available only by mail application, and it was later revealed that the box office received 3.5 million requests for tickets, enough to fill the venue 580 times. Along with praise, ABBA turned out to be amazingly successful at reproducing their records, wrote Cream. There were complaints that ABBA performed slickly, but with a zero personality coming across from a total of 16 people on stage, Melody Maker. One of the Royal Albert Hall concerts was filmed as a reference for the filming of the Australian tour for what became ABBA. The movie, though it is not exactly known how much of the concert was filmed. After the European leg of the tour, in March 1977, ABBA played 11 dates in Australia before a total of 160,000 people. The opening concert in Sydney, at the Sydney showground on March 3rd, to an audience of 20,000 was marred by torrential rain, with Lingstad slipping on the wet stage during the concert. However, all four members would later recall this concert as the most memorable of their career. Upon their arrival in Melbourne, a civic reception was held at the Melbourne Town Hall, and ABBA appeared on the balcony to greet an enthusiastic crowd of 6,000. In Melbourne, the group gave three concerts at the Sydney Meyer Music Bowl with 14,500, at each including the Australian Prime Minister Malcolm Fraser and his family. At the first Melbourne concert, an additional 16,000 people gathered outside the fenced-off area to listen to the concert. In Adelaide, the group performed one concert at Football Park in front of 20,000 people, with another 10,000 listening outside. During the first of five concerts in Perth, there was a bomb scare with everyone having to evacuate the entertainment center. The trip was accompanied by mass hysteria and unprecedented media attention, Swedish ABBA stirs box office and down under tour, and the media coverage of the quartet rivals that set to cover the upcoming royal tour of Australia, wrote Variety, and is captured on film in ABBA. The movie, directed by Lasse Hallström, the Australian tour and its subsequent ABBA, the movie produced some ABBA lore as well. False God's blonde good looks had long made her the band's pinup girl, a role she disdained. During the Australian tour, she performed in a skin-tight white jumpsuit, causing one Australian newspaper to use the headline, Agnetha's Bottom Tops Dull Show. 
When asked about this at a news conference, she replied, Don't they have bottoms in Australia? ABBA. The album in December 1977, ABBA followed up Arrival with a more ambitious fifth album, ABBA. The album, released to coincide with the debut of ABBA. The movie. Although the album was less well-received by UK reviewers, it did spawn more worldwide. Hits, The Name of the Game and Take a Chance on Me, which both topped the UK charts and racked up impressive sales in most countries. Although The Name of the Game was generally the more successful in the Nordic countries and down under, while Take a Chance on Me was more successful in North America and the German-speaking countries. The Name of the Game was a number two hit in the Netherlands, Belgium, and Sweden, while also making the top five in Finland, Norway, New Zealand, and Australia, while only peaking at numbers 10, 12, and 15 in Mexico, the U.S., and Canada. Take a Chance on Me was a number one hit in Austria, Belgium, and Mexico, made the top three in the U.S., Canada, the Netherlands, Germany, and Switzerland, while only reaching numbers 12 and 14 in Australia and New Zealand, respectively. Both songs were top 10 hits in countries as far afield as Rhodesia and South Africa, as well as in France. Although Take a Chance on Me did not top the American charts, it proved to be ABBA's biggest hit single there, selling more copies than Dancing Queen. The drop in sales in Australia was felt to be inevitable by industry observers as an ABBA fever that had existed there for almost three years could only last so long as adolescents would naturally begin to move away from a group so deified by both their parents and grandparents.